Hi guys, in the last video we have solved a consignment account problem based on invoice price. Now in this video we are going to start with a new chapter called branch accounts. So let's start this chapter. In this chapter there are two parties here. All right. First is head office and the second party is branch. So now what is meant by head office? What is meant by branch? I will explain it to you with the help of a small example. Let's say there's a company called ABC Limited, ABC Limited in Delhi, in Delhi, which is involved in the business of shoemaking. All right. So now this company is doing very well in Delhi and now it wants to expand its business to other states. So what it does is it opens a new outlet in Bangalore. It opens a new outlet or new shop or store whatever you may call it so this new outlet in bangalore will be called as the branch of abc limited it will be called as the branch of abc limited because because it is involved in the same business of shoes it is controlled by the abc limited and it is geographically separated from the head office this is the head office all right, because it is the main office, right? So the main office will be the head office. So this will be head office and this will be the branch. All right. So now you need to understand the relationship between the head office and branch. So the first point in the relationship is that the head office always, the head office always sends goods to the branch. They sends goods to the branch. Or sometimes they may not like in the service business they may not service they may not send the services but they will send the supporting goods to the branch all right if it is the goods business then directly they will send the goods all right and the second thing is the second thing is there will be expenses in the branch right the sh uh, rent of showroom then there will be salaries wages there will be many expenses, right? Telephone expenses. So all those expenses will be met by, the expenses will be met by the head office. So paid by HO. So the cash will be sent to the branch to pay for those expenses, all right? Then the next thing is, there's one more thing that is, yeah, after selling the goods, after selling the goods, whatever revenue they receive from the customers, that revenue will be remitted. All right, it will be remitted. It will be remitted the cash. All right, the cash will be remitted back to the head office. So they will receive the goods, they will sell the goods, and whatever uh, cash they receive, they will remit it back to the head office. This cycle will go on. All right, and the cash, the expenses will be met by the head office. So this is the concept of branch accounts. Okay, one more thing. See now why the accounts are prepared why the branch accounts are prepared see that's the reason that's the reason see the branch is geographically separated and so the head office is very interested to know what is the position of those branches is it making loss or profit so these accounts are prepared of branch of uh, separately all right they prepare the branch account separately so that they can uh, assess the position of the branches are they making profit or loss all right okay so this is the concept of branch accounts now let's see the structure of branch accounts branches are broadly classified into two domestic branches and foreign branches domestic branches are those branches which are located in the same country where its head office is located for example, if a company headquartered in Delhi opens a branch in Bangalore, then that Bangalore branch would be called as domestic branch because it is in the same country, right? Simple. Okay. Now, foreign branch. Foreign branches are those branches which are not located, not, okay, N-O-T, not located in the same country. Then those branches are called as foreign branches. For example, if a company headquartered in Delhi opens a branch opens a branch in UK or any other foreign country then those branches which are opened outside India would be called as foreign branches okay 
all right now domestic branches are further classified into dependent branches and independent branches dependent branches mean in simple word it means that these are small scale branches these are small scale branches which are uh, like involved in very less transaction very less transaction are conducted in these branches and very few employees are employed so the business is very small here in the dependent branches all right so they are dependent on their head office they are dependent on their head office now here in the case of independent branches it's exactly the opposite case these branches operate on very large scale these branches are large scale branches so these are independent branches they are not dependent on their head office now by dependency what i mean is that these dependent branches do not maintain their own books of accounts they depend upon the head office and head office maintains their books of accounts on behalf of them because these dependent branches are small scale branches so it is not profitable to hire an accountant to prepare separate books of account because they are involved they conduct only 15 to 20 transactions right they are very small scale branches okay so it is not profitable here to make own accounts so they depend upon the head office to prepare their accounts right okay now independent branches independent branches are independent of head office they maintain their own books of accounts their own books of accounts and and they send the books at the end of the year to the head office okay now let's go further and see the accounting treatment which is required by each of these type of branches to find out profit or loss okay so in the case of dependent branches there are three methods first is data system second is stock and data system and the third is final account system under the data system we prepare only branch account and if needed we prepare debtors account so only mostly two accounts are only prepared here in the data system so this is the easiest among all these three okay the second one is a bit difficult a bit confusing actually because there are five to six accounts here so i will show it to you later okay so don't worry then the third is final account system in final account system we prepare only trading and profit and loss account of the branch to find out its profit or loss so this is also very easy because we have been preparing uh, final accounts since 11th standard right okay so let's move on now then there is independent branches in the case of independent account in the independent branches we prepare the proper accounts like everything journals then the ledger the subsidiary books trial balance balance sheet okay we'll prepare the proper account same in the case of the foreign branches oh i forgot to tell you this the foreign branches are independent branches okay there is no dependent branches in foreign branches because foreign branches maintain their own books of account because uh, their currency would be different right the head office if head office is in delhi then the books of head office will be in rupees right but the transaction conducting in the foreign branches for example in uk their transaction would be in pounds right so it would not be feasible it would not be feasible to prepare the books of accounts by the head office in delhi because their transactions are in pounds right so foreign branches are always independent branches okay so this is the accounting treatment we have to do three methods here and here proper accounts which should be maintained so it's very simple i will show it to you in the next video okay now first let's start off with our very first method debtor system under data system we prepare only one account that is branch account and this method is very simple okay is the most easiest method so this branch account we prepare it in the books of head office right always keep that in mind so here's the format let's start off mm, yeah first we'll take two balance b by d all the opening balances of assets will take it on the debit side of branch account okay and yeah so stock debtors petty cash furniture prepare expenses all the opening balances of assets will be debited okay then opposite to this 
we have one more posting that is by balance b by d here it was two balance here it is by balance by balance b by d here we will take all the opening balances of liabilities given in the question for example creditors bank loan there may be more okay for example overdraft is there uh, bills payable is there so there may be more okay so all those liabilities will be credited over here okay this is over and this is also over then there is two goods sent to branch two goods sent to branch means like uh, in the consignment as in the consignment the consigner used to send the goods to consignee right we have seen the consignment account chapter if you have not don't worry uh, see the head office here the head office sends goods to the branch right so whatever goods are being sent to the branch will come over here okay let's say the head office is sending the goods costing one lakh then one lakh will come over here and two goods sent to branch will come over here okay simple it is the posting of sending the goods to the branch here the branch is receiving the goods and head office is sending the goods so here opposite to this posting there is one more posting over here which is opposite to this one buy goods sent to branch see whenever the branch isn't able to sell the goods then what it does is it returns it back to the head office returned by branch whenever there is returns by branch then you have to credit it as buy goods sent to branch okay these two are opposite postings okay if only there are returns in the question okay not just automatically you have to do it no if it is given in the question you have to take it otherwise leave it okay all right so this is over this is also over next this this see when the goods are received by the branch it is the duty of branch to sell those goods right so they may sell it on cash basis or on credit basis right so if they sell on cash basis mean immediately they will receive cash in hand right they will have the cash so that cash will be immediately in the that year only it would be remitted at the end of the year or that year only so they will remit it back to back to the head office that cash will be immediately remitted back to the head office for example if they sold uh, goods costing 50000 then that 50000 will be remitted back to the head office the posting will be like this okay by bank account and under that cash sales 50000 like that you have to write but if they sell on credit basis means they are not receiving the cash immediately the customers are promising them customers mean debtors here right they are our debtors because they owe debt to us right so they are our debtors so it means that they are promising so there is a high chance that entire amount of cash entire amount will not be received this year for example if we sold uh, cash we sold goods on credit basis of uh, let's say 70,000 then there's a high chance that we may only receive 50,000 this year and not 70,000 we may receive 20,000 we might receive 20,000 the next year there's a chance right so whatever cash that is received from debtors in this year will only come over here if in the question it is given 70,000 credit sales you shouldn't take directly 70,000 over here there will be one more one more line will be given there collection from debtors cash received from debtors so only that you have to take it over here whatever actual cash that is being received by the debtors okay you have to take that and you have to add up both of them and write it in the out, outer column okay all right so this is over this is also over see next we have two bank now what is this this is the expenses being paid by the head office so whatever expenses are being incurred by the branch it is always paid by the head office okay such as rent it may there may be salaries fret wages there may be so many expenses okay cash remittance daily cash is also sent to the petty cash okay not big amount of cash like cash sales or like that no just this petty cash will be sent to the branch for the daily maintenance right 
so the, all these expenses are being paid by the head office so that will come over here as to bank and if head office is receiving by bank and if, if the branch is receiving to bank okay all right then we have two provision for bank debts if there is any provision given in the question for bank debts only for bank debts then it will be debited over here okay all right the next thing is the opposite entries of this liabilities see here there is opening balance of liabilities right so on the debit side there will be the closing balance of the liabilities okay similarly here there is the opening balance of assets so on the credit side there will be the closing balance of all those assets okay simple right opening balance of assets closing balance of assets and here opening balance of liabilities closing balance of liabilities it's very simple you just have to co copy it you just have to see if there's a depreciation or something then you have to deduct it and take it over here and if there is debtors and here they have not given debtors then you have to prepare another account debtors account i will show it to you okay don't worry all right you just have to understand this uh, format okay if you understand it it is very easy then if the credit side is bigger if the credit side is bigger then debit side is shorter right so that balancing figure will be the profit okay that will be the profit and if debit side is bigger then the credit side will be shorter so that gap or that balance would be the loss okay so like this you have to prepare the branch account it's very simple okay don't worry it's very simple all right so to goods sent to branch by goods sent to branch this is the goods are being sent to branch these are being received by the head office because it is returned by branch and here there is cash sales and credit sales cash sales immediately they are receiving so they directly remitted back to the head office and here only the cash received from debtors is remitted back to the head office because uh, some are on the credit basis so it is uh, collection is pending okay all right then there is provision for bank debts if there is any provision we will debit it and all the uh, closing balances will be here of liabilities and the closing balance of assets will be credited so this is the format of branch accounts okay simple right okay 